Hello everyone and welcome back to the good stuff, we are continuing the Morphe Saga and if you are just joining us in the Morphe Saga we haven't gotten uh, very far, this is only the third video in the saga so uh, if you want to check it out from the, from the beginning the first two will be the first uh, thing you will see in the description below so check it out if you're just uh, tuning in. So this is the second game of the match uh, that we that we mentioned, Paul Morphy versus uh, Hungarian master Johan Jakob Löwenthal, and uh, we already saw how Morphy won that very nice game. And uh, here's the second game. Morphy again has the white pieces, uh, and there is an explanation to this, which we will discuss at the end of the game. And also, uh, I've prepared uh, a nice photo of this matchup. Uh, let me just uh, fetch it. Uh, sorry, let me just find it. Okay, here it is. Uh, there we go. It's it's a bit small, so let me just enlarge it. Uh, it's not uh, from this exact match, uh, as uh, this is from 1958, and this match that we are now covering is from 1950. Uh, but uh, just so we get in the mood, as we don't have any other photo of the two of them playing, so uh, let's just enjoy that. The two gentlemen uh, at the board. Uh, it's w one of the games where Morphe had the black pieces, obviously. Uh, now, that being said, uh, let's check it out. So this game, Morphe also opens with e4, but here Leventhal opens uh, with c5. So he goes for the Sicilian defense, and the Morphe goes for f4, uh, which is today known as the Grand Prix attack against the Sicilian. In those days, Morphe just uh, didn't want to develop his knight before uh, playing uh, the, uh, the f-pawn, so uh, why, would, why would he do such a thing? Uh, something that's uh, well known since since Philidor uh, came up with, with those ideas. Uh, and sorry about that. Uh, we have e6 uh, by black, preparing uh, d5, so fi fighting for the center. Knight to f3 and now d5. Uh, we have e captures on d5, e captures on d5 and d4. Morphe also uh, fights for the center. Uh, we have bishop to g4, now pinning the knight, and bishop to e2. And it's interesting to note that uh, this position uh, reached on move 6 has never again been repeated in chess history. Well, in, in tournament games. Uh, so, we have bishop captures on f3, bishop captures, and knight to f6. Continuing development, Morphe castles and bishop to e7. Lomental prepares the castle as well. Bishop to e3, now with ideas of capturing on c5. And here a modern player would uh, most likely just castle and if and if captures go knight a6, go after the pawn this way. Uh, but Lomental decided to trade in the center right away, which is a bit unprincipled, uh, breaking the tension, but, uh, but okay. We have bishop captures on d4 and now Lomental castles. We have knight to c3. Uh, and here, knight to c6, going for Morphy's bishop. And now, yeah, Morphy has to decide whether he wants to keep the bishop pair, like bishop f2, let's say d4, knight b5, and play this game, uh, where he would go probably a4, and then if a6, he could remaneuver the knight into the game via the c4 square. Uh, or he wants to uh, trade the d pawn for the b pawn, and this is what Morphy goes for. He plays bishop captures on f6, bishop captures, we have knight captures on d5 now, Bishop captures on b2 and then now rook to b1. So now, if you didn't have this check, then you would also lose the b7 pawn. So bishop d4 check first, king to h1 and then now uh, rook to b8, which makes sense. Uh, you want to get your rook away from this diagonal, also you do not want to uh, lose the b7 pawn. So rook b8, uh, perfectly good move. Uh, and now c3, kicking away the bishop, uh, also taking away two very important squares from the from the knight here, and also it opens up some diagonals uh, for the queen if needed. So bishop back to c5, and now f5. Now Morphy wants to play f6 and uh, start an attack against the black king. So we have queen to h4, now Lomenthal uh, prepares a little trap, now if Morphy does go for f6, then bishop d6 is very strong for him. Uh, if you go g3, then just bishop captures, the h pawn is pinned, so you would have to go 97 check, and here you would just have to give back uh, that pawn, and it would actually be black who's better here, up a pawn. So instead, Morphy goes g3 right away, now bishop to d6 makes a little sense. Uh, so queen to g5, and only now f6 by Morphy. Now, while g6 is, uh, is a perfectly fine move, uh, Leventhal decides that uh, he, he's going to give up the g7 pawn and he's going to start uh, with, with his own attack. So he goes knight to e5, uh, Morphy captures of course on g7, it's, uh, it's a must play. Uh, so f captures on g7, attacks the rook and now rook f to d8. And here 
Uh, okay, it's a, it's a strong position for black, perhaps. Uh, the, the knight cannot move. You have ideas like rook to d6, bringing the rook over the attack via rook to h6. Uh, could be very strong. However, Morphe has a, uh, also a very strong move here, so feel free to pause the video and try to find this uh, very strong move uh, while I give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations, as it's, it's not an easy move to find, but it is uh, the, the engine stop recommendation, and Morphe played it bishop to e4. So congratulations to everyone who found it. Uh, bishop to e4 now with the idea that uh, he wants to play rook to f5. And now if you continue with, let's say, rook d6, you want to shift the rook into the attack, rook f5. Now you pick up the pawn, you defend the knight. Now comes rook to b5, and here you see some problems. Uh, the bishop is, uh, well, the bishop doesn't have a good square since the rook just blocked it. And if uh, if the bishop is gone, then you have ideas like knight to, knight to e7 check, open up a discovery to, to the rook, queen captures rook, all sorts of ideas become possible. So let's say bishop a3, rook a5, you still go after the bishop, and now there is not much to be done. Uh, if, you, if you defend it, just rook captures, and uh, you cannot recapture because if you recapture, then knight e7 check, king moves, and then just queen queen picks up the rook and you are up a bishop or, or up a piece so bishop to e4 incredibly strong uh, so Lowenthal of course uh, in expecting uh, of this uh, uh, rook to f uh, uh, rook to f5 move he goes queen to g7 uh, grabs that pawn now the knight is already defended but now queen to h5 by Morphy uh, we have rook to d6 now preparing rook to h6 uh, but here Morphy just plays bishop captures on h7 with check and now the problem is if you capture then you then you have queen captures on e5 and uh, here you're just lost uh, knight to f6 check is coming and there's not much to be done here you would have to you would have to give up the the rook but it doesn't help you because either you can capture here or you can capture the b8 rook with check uh, there's just uh, not not much to be done here so, uh, after bishop captures on h7, we have king to f8 by Lowenthal, and now bishop back to e4. Uh, we have rook to h6, kicking back Morphe's queen, queen to f7 now. Uh, sorry, f5, uh, attacking f7. Uh, and now comes queen captures on g3. So Lowenthal wins back the pawn, but Morphe says it's not a problem, just rook b2. The h2 pawn is now guarded, there's no mate. Uh, and here Lowenthal should go for queen to h3, offer a queen trade and uh, play, uh, go into the end game. Uh, but it uh, seems like uh, Lowenthal either did not uh, quite yet uh, fully grasp the extent of Morphe's, uh, Morphe's skills, uh, he goes rook to e8 instead. And this allows Morphe for, for a very nice trick. Uh, here Morphe plays knight to f6, he goes after the rook first and after the rook moves, uh, now well, now Morphe could have gone uh, a bit differently. Here, Morphe uh, decided to go rook to, rook to g2, which makes sense. Uh, if the queen moves, uh, rook, to, rook to g8 pretty much finishes the game. Uh, but he allows uh, uh, Leventhal to, to sacrifice the queen. Uh, what he should have done is just knight d7 check. And this makes perfect sense. Since uh, the knight cannot capture uh, due to the checkmate on f7, and if you move the king, then it's just a free bishop. Knight captures uh, on c5, and after rook f6, going after uh, going after the queen. Now you have rook captures on b7 with check, king f8, and now again knight to e6. And here here comes the the tricky part. After f captures on e6, now you capture the queen. Uh, now you give up the queen, rook captures, rook captures, the king has to move, king eight, and now you recapture the queen, and it, it's game over, two rooks and the bishop against the knight. But Morphe thought, ah, okay, we're just gonna play rook g2, no point calculating this nasty line. Uh, but he allowed queen captures on g2. Uh, from Leventhal, we have bishop captures on g2, and now rook h captures on f6. So here... Uh, Morphe has to decide what to do. Problem is, if you keep the queen with queen h5, let's say rook captures on f1, bishop captures, uh, b6, it's, it will be very hard to play uh, against uh, these pieces because you don't have a way of removing, uh, the, for example, the dark square bishop. You don't have a b pawn, you don't have a d pawn, and you only have a light square bishop. So this uh, bishop is immortal for the rest of the game. And with it being placed on such a such a nice diagonal, it will not be easy to defend. And the the knight is a tricky piece. Also, there's the rook. Uh, it, it will not be easy to play against this. And Morphe agrees. He decides to go into this endgame. So queen captures on f6. Rook captures. Rook captures. 
Uh, and now uh, he's just uh, up an exchange, uh, which uh, as you've seen in the previous game, it is not a problem for Morphe to convert. But let's see how he does. So knight g4 goes after the rook, rook f5 now, attacks the bishop and b6. And okay, like we said, this bishop, nothing is touching this bishop, so it, it could have uh, some... Uh, uh, Loventhal could have some ideas on how to save this game, perhaps. But okay, bishop d5, Morphy immediately threatens f7 and forces the knight to go back. Knight h6, we have rook to f6 now, attacking the knight. Again, if you move it, you lose the f7 pawn. So king g7 and now rook to c6, uh, preventing the king from, uh, from uh, going deeper into the game. We have a5 now, it's a very, very good setup when you have a bishop against a rook. Uh, and rook to c7 now, again, not allowing the knight to move. So king g6, uh, here Lowenthal wants to play f6 to finally get rid of this target. And now king g2, Morphy starts bringing the king into the game. Uh, we have f6 and now king to f3. Uh, we have knight to f5 uh, and now comes bishop to e4. And this is a no-brainer for Morphy. He's up material so he knows that uh, all, all trades are uh, uh, only, only giving him more advantage. King g5 and now just trading here, captures, captures, and h4. There's now a wall, so the black king cannot approach the pawn. King g6 and now rook to c6, saying, okay, if you go after the pawn, I'm going to capture the f6 pawn. But there is nothing better. So king h5, but now rook to uh, king g3, not allowing this capture. Uh, and here comes f5. Uh, Morphy goes after the pawn, rook to f6, and here uh, a very tricky move, f4. Here Loventhal uh, is hoping for rook captures on f4, and then so he could uh, play rook, bishop to d6, winning the rook here. Although it wouldn't really help uh, uh, all that much. Uh, Morphy instead plays king captures, and now he says, okay, if you capture, then you're just getting checkmated with rook to h6. So uh, Loventhal unable, of course, to recapture the pawn. He goes bishop to f2. He has to play something, uh, but now king e4. Now Morphy just uh, goes after the queenside pawns with bishop to c5. And here Morphy just shows how well he understands the game. Uh, rook to f5 check with king captures on h4. And now he gives up the rook for the bishop uh, because, of course, he will just gobble up the pawns and then queen one of his pawns. Here after king to d5, uh, uh, Loventhal resigned the game and uh, another victory for Paul Morphy. Now, I mentioned that it was a three-game match. Uh, however, uh, moves of the third game are uh, are not saved. Uh, I've read uh, several different reasons on why why they weren't saved. Uh, some said that uh, both of them played, uh, played uh, rather poorly, so they decided not to save it. Um, I've read somewhere that uh, uh, Loventhal had a really uh, promising position. Not a promising position, that he had a drawish, drawish position, and then he made a blunder, and then Morphe offered the draw, and then uh, Loventhal accepted uh, I've read uh, that Morphy won all of the three games, uh, but um, it's, it's hard to say. There are so many sources, and I, I, I mean, I'm not uh, uh, able to, to uh, decide which one is correct. I've seen some uh, somewhere written that uh, Loventhal actually published a different result than Morphy's father published, and uh, the, um, Loventhal said that the, the game, the, the match ended two and a half, uh, uh, half uh, in Morphy's favor, whereas it was actually three three to zero so it's hard to say so uh, basically what we can conclude here is that Morphy won the match his first ever match against the chess master uh, Hungarian master Johan Jakob Blumenthal with either three and a half to zero or two and a half uh, uh, to, 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 to half a point so that's that's what I can tell you and it's really it's really a shame I mean poor poor Lowenthal uh, he didn't know what he was up against he thought he was just playing against a, a 12 year old boy well okay almost 13 it was almost his birthday uh, but uh, I mean imagine if you played uh, someone like that and then one day uh, they, they tell you okay yeah you know that guy who played yeah he, he's just the most talented chess player who ever lived so it was definitely tough as uh, he was a renowned master and this results, uh, the, the result of the game, uh, the match was published. So uh, probably uh, <laughs> it didn't go all that well for, for poor uh, Lowenthal. But uh, I mean, it's, uh, it's uh, what it is. Uh, a lot of people had this uh, happen to them when they fa faced Morphe, which you will see uh, if you continue following this saga. So yeah, uh, also I, I've read that uh, the the match, uh, the, the two of them played, of course, the match, but it was also followed by uh, a friend of Morphe's father and uh, Morphe's uncle. So three of them were watching the match and they said that uh, whenever M Morphe made a move that Lowenthal was like, uh, like he, he really understood how, how strong the, the moves were. 
Uh, but yeah, uh, that's uh, that's the game. I do hope you enjoyed it. Not really sure where we're gonna take the saga from now, uh, but uh, you know that's that's also one of the one of the joys of uh, enjoying the Paul Morphy saga. You have to also uh, expect what the next video will be about. So there's that. Uh, but yeah, uh, that's the game. I do hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I would like to thank Yaroslav Karkov, uh, Lance Short, uh, Ryan McVeigh, uh, Kyle Schemmel, and Joe Kapko for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. Uh, as usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon, uh, continuing the coverage of the of the Morphe saga whenever I get the chance uh, for, from the from the current events that are being played in the in the world. So yeah, uh, thank you all. I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your day.